Hello and welcome back. In the last episode we repaired the tip deck and tip mechanics. So this is working. We are able now to press play, pause and stop on the CD player, which leads us to take care of the CD player itself. In this episode we are going to replace all the capacitors on the CDM2 drive. We're going to clean everything. I will show you what is one of the weaknesses of this drive, what can lead to some issues. And when we have done this, there will be the next episode where we take care about the controller panel and then we can figure out why the table of content is not loading. There might be a chip broken or it's just the capacitors. We will see. Now everything is here. Capacitors and our CDM drive. Interesting, there are some little piece of plastic added and glued to the panel. I don't know why. Haven't this seen before. Let's start. I've ordered new sockets and I need to wait until I get them. So I will come back to this a little bit later to put the chips on a socket. Let's have a look here. There's basically nothing in from interesting. We do not need to disassemble everything. What I'm going to do is remove this black lock here. Because, because it can destroy the flexible cable here, the ribbon cable. And presses all the time onto the onto the end of the of the cable and 
might can happen that the let me see you can see we can see it's a little bit squeezed and that's not good so it can happen that there's no contact anymore and we'll then get a lot of troubles we can check okay second okay it's working and this one here seems to be working the cable what I'm going to do is I replace this with a printed lock which is made from flexible filament it's not almost perfect but it's doing its job it's holding the flexible cable down because the arm would swing over the cable and if it wouldn't be uh, down the arm hangs so it cannot move freely then so we're going to put it absolutely down and here's the difference this one is very hard and it presses the the cable down so see this is not not really flexible even if it looks like or it does not move um, whilst this one has a flat uh, bottom and is also flexible it, it goes in very easily um, it is not as tough as the other one but it is it is enough that's more than enough what else can we do? We can clean the laser. Okay, just put this back. Using some pads, we need a small screwdriver. Careful, not lose anything. Okay, we need to remove the shield again. I'm going to clean this little fellow. Okay, and stop. We can see now we have a problem. You may notice there was a small piece of plastic on the focus and this is now missing. I haven't seen this first and we will now see what happens if this little piece of plastic is missing. Maybe we lost it because the glue was not strong enough anymore. However, it's gone and we are now running into real problems.
and all the cables connected. You cannot mix them up. Easy. The sound you heard was the laser unit trying to focus, but it's not possible to focus because we lost this very small piece of plastic. So I need to replace this with something else. Well, it took me some time to notice that there is something missing. And because this little piece of plastic is transparent, I haven't seen this immediately on the desk. On other CDM2 drives I had, it is black and then you can see. It. If you look very carefully, you can spot it on the desk. At the moment I don't know how to put this back on. I need a little bit of glue maybe. Let's see if I can find something. Okay, I'm going to try something. That's not perfect. Oh, that's... That's basically a tape with two, which probably fits on two sides. So I'm going to try to place this here. Ah, let's give it a try. I don't think that's working, but we will see. Into demo mode. And it's going up and down, which hasn't done it. It has not done this before. Here's the focus. Okay. As you can see, it is a problem with the focus. I put it here. It's not working again. Um, well, that's just because of this little plate here, it seems so. Of course, in the final sound machine, it will be in a vertical position. Let me connect a uh, See if it can give me everything. Oh, awesome, isn't it?
Okay, so let's get back the, the panel. Not quite happy at the moment. This will take us a little bit more time, but the good thing is the controller panel is working. At least just something, isn't it? The cover is back on. Let's try again. You can see 16 tracks. That's very interesting. So it's basically playing. The problem is it's not playing when it's in a horizontal position, isn't it? No, it's not. The display is flickering. Ah, might be a contact here. Need to check the cables then. Um, well, that's interesting. It is only playing in a vertical position. Um, let's go to track 16 up to the top, see if there's playing. Well, there's no problem if it's in a vertical position. We probably could use another one because this uh, unit is not working. I have not repaired it until now. So maybe we can use this focus unit. That would be a solution. At the moment, I go with that. And let's see how it uh, responds. Let me just put this somehow in a vertical position and then play. It's perfect. See? It would be absolutely perfect. Well, there's one more thing to do to ensure that the currency of the laser is okay. We do not know if someone played around with the potentiometer and the voltage or the currency is too high and might destroy the laser. That's why we are going to said this there are a lot of information out in the internet how to do this and also to do not do it keep your hands off but if i can do it you can do it too i prepared already something we need to go around resistor 3102 we need to connect the voltmeter there so i just get some cables to make it easier to uh, connect the voltmeter and you need to set the currency at the potentiometer here so let's see I need to go into a vertical position let's connect the Voltmeter here. Okay, we switch on the voltmeter, switch on the device. Press play. I have already um, set the potentiometer. Usually it should be 50 millivolts plus minus 5 millivolts. I'm going less. So this is the minimum. I don't want to destroy the laser. If you buy a device from, from a flea market and if it was already open, check if the currency is correct. Sometimes they just um, put up the currency and this will destroy the laser very quickly. So I'm sure that this is 
working. We are now fine. As you can see, interesting thing is when it goes up to the top. Let's see. It needs a little bit more, especially when you navigate through the tracks. Well, I think that's fine. The service manual points out you need to play a track on a service CD, which we do not have. And as you can see, 45 millivolts. That's quite good. Fine, so we are then finished with the CDM2. It was an easy task, wasn't it? As a conclusion, the weight of the two-sided tape which I used to put the plastic panel of the Focus back on is of course higher than the original solution. It seems that the weight is too high in a horizontal position and the lens is not able to focus anymore even when the optic is moving freely. In a vertical position, due to less Earth gravity, it is working. As I said, I will keep it that way and we'll see how it performs in the future. That's all for today. Next time we are going to exchange all the capacitors here, put everything on a socket. And this time we also need some audio grade capacitors. I'm going to, ex to, to replace all the capacitors around the op amps here with audio grade capacitors even it might not be necessary. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.